Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's September 5th, 2024. Let's talk boxing. There's a very important fight for those of you who are looking at 140. There's a very important fight. It's in my favorites folder in its totality. Right? Take a look at it. It's Andy Hiraoka. Remember that name, Andy Hiraoka. And he's taking on Ishmael Barrazzo. Let's be blunt here. I made a video, pre-fight video, for premium subscribers where I said, look, you've got to jump on Ishmael Barrazzo, who's going off at a plus 350. Right? Barrazzo has one of the best left hands, in my opinion, in boxing. Right? This is an older guy who knows how to box in the pocket. But one of the problems with picking fights in boxing is that sometimes athleticism trumps technique. Now the guy he's fighting, Andy Hiraoka, and let's be charitable here because 140 has people like Devin Haney, right? Jack Catterall, uh, Teofimo Lopez. Andy Hiraoka, while not the best technician and we'll talk about it you'll be able to judge the fight with me just look at the video after you watch this video the video of the fight Andy Hiroka is the best athlete at 140 pounds right the equivalent in baseball would be the fastball pitcher who can throw it awfully hard but who doesn't quite know where the ball is going Right now, I know I'm sounding hard here. Hiraoka gets the stoppage in the ninth round. Right, my guy makes it well into the second half of the fight. Um, he gets caught. But what I want people to do is to look at Hiraoka. Now, you know my adage here. Punchers only have to be right once. Right, you're going to see an athlete who is using his legs for defense. Now understand, this is a lefty-lefty fight, right? Both guys are in a bit of unfamiliar circumstance here because lefties, of course, prefer to go up against righties, right? So it's a lefty-lefty fight. Barrazzo, huge puncher, but is in his 40s, right? Now, what Hiroka does here is he makes himself hard to find. Folks, believe it or not, this is that rarity. This is the slugger who is hard to find in the ring. So he's moving straight back, right? His game is to come ready to throw his left hand, which is huge. Right? I would say Hiroka's left hand is one of the better left hands in boxing. Right? I don't place it on the same level I place Barroso's. But let's just say because he's an athlete, Hiroka is more sudden with his. So this is the guy who has great foot speed, but is moving in straight lines. And he's not defensively mindful. He has his hands low. That's by design. Because when your hands are low, you can hide your hands a little bit better, and you're more prepared to throw a punch. Right? If I have my hands up here, then when there's an opening, I have to reach back to get leverage and then hit you with it. But if I'm keeping my hands cocked, all I need is an opening. So you're going to see several times in this fight, this guy is 
just jumping forward. He has a pretty good jab. He's trying to jab his way into the scorecards. Right? His game's not to engage you. His game is simply to jab you from distance. Be episodic. Right? He's not a lateral mover. This isn't the smooth guy who's hovering around the pocket. This is not Andre Ward. No, this is the guy who is binary. He's outside the pocket. He's inside the pocket. You start to fight back. He jumps back out. He does not want to stick around the pocket, wait for openings to develop. No, he has the big left hand and he has the jab to keep you busy. You start throwing punches, the guy is relying on the fact that he's a better athlete than you to dodge the punches while getting outside. I'm not kidding, folks. That's his game. He's a world-class athlete. He's a world-class boxer. He's calling out Valenzuela. He is one of the elites at 140. You may not have heard much about him because he fights in Japan. So let me just say here, the athleticism, the length, keep Barrazzo at bay. It's shocking. Barrazzo tries to come forward, can't find the guy. Because the guy, of course, comes in, hits you with a few jabs, then he moves back, then he's out of the picture. That's what foot speed does for you. The guy's right hand is so special, he lands it in the fifth round, Barrazzo's rocked. He lands it in the sixth round, Barrazzo is dropped. Barrazzo gets back in the saddle, is hanging around, folks. The knockout, <laughs> he earned it. Understand, he hits Barrazzo, the world changes. Barrazzo's diminished. Barrazzo tries to move across the ring. He follows Barrazzo. He's an athlete. There's no place to hide. Right? He catches Barrazzo with, of course, what else? A left hand. He's a southpaw. Right? Barrazzo goes down. The ref is extremely patient. Right? Barrazzo knocked down multiple times. The ref is about to let the fight continue. And then he hears from Barrazzo's corner, good corner work, because Barrazzo was down on the scorecards. In other words, an older fighter like Barrazzo could not get this guy to engage or stay in the pocket. This is a counterpuncher's worst nightmare. Right? This is kind of like Roy Jones was. Right? Jones, more skills than this guy. Right? Jones... A righty had a spectacular left hook. Let's give Jones credit, right? This guy is a southpaw with a spectacular, and I mean spectacular, straight left. He also has a pretty good left hook. That's his game. He marries it with a right jab that he can hit you with, and if you can't find him, and he lands enough jabs... Judges are going to give him the round because he's the one who's making you miss even though his defense consists of not tucking his head, having punches bounce off a shoulder, uh, figuring out your fight pattern, knowing when to clinch you to smother your shots. That's not his defense. He's 28 years old. His defense consists of fresh legs, reflexes. He leans. You miss a couple of shots even though he's a tall guy. You can't find him. He's hit and run. Right? The fight style is so unique, folks, I've posted the full fight. I want people to look at it round after round. You're going to notice. He can jump back with the best of them. Right? This is the guy who, you know, when he needs to get out of the pocket, he can move backward. What I believe fighters are going to have to do looking at film is they're going to have to figure out how to 
faint so much that this guy doesn't know when to jump back. They're going to have to figure out, too, how to faint, have the guy jump straight back out of the pocket, and then to leap straight forward. Because this guy is not Canelo. He's not going to be moving side to side. He's not going to keep you guessing on where he's going to be, even though you can't find him. As I said, he's a fastball pitcher. This is not Greg Maddox. Right? This is a fastball pitcher who is just trying to get it over the plate and then to get out of the way. Right? So, I give Andy credit. He's one of the better athletes in boxing. But I can't say he's a master technician. I wish I were smart enough to have just taken the prop on him by KO with, of course, the plus 350 on Brazo, which I thought was a gift. But I was foolish enough to say in the pre-fight video that even though I didn't think the fight would go the distance, I wanted to wait what to see what props came out. This is a learning moment for me. Next time, I'm going to put just a perfunctory half hedge, not even a full hedge, on a guy who I think has a chance at a, at a stoppage, right? Hiraoka was ahead on the scorecards. It was in the last third of the fight, the ninth round. But you understand, this guy is feast or famine. Whoever he fights... You have to consider him by stoppage. Don't fall in love too much with over-unders because this guy doesn't hang around the pocket long enough to guarantee either. Right? Hiraoka by stoppage has to be one of the props you strongly consider. He caught Barrazzo. Barrazzo was stopped. Right? It's a frustrating fight in a sense because I can't say, Barrazzo, who's losing rounds? Because Barrazzo can't find him. Right? I can't say Barrazzo was thoroughly outboxed. Andy didn't stick around long enough to have prolonged confrontations in the pocket. This is literally a jab, jab, jab. Oh, you're coming at me? I'm going to jump straight back three feet. And then I'm going to keep backing up. Moving around the ring, waiting for the next episode. When I can jump in the ring and, you know, try to set up the straight left that I've been trying to set up from the opening bell. Right? He succeeded. He got the stoppage. He's calling out champions at 140. With this fight style, understand, as great an in-the-pocket counter-puncher, slipper, and mover that Jack Catterall is, Catterall would have a hard time with this guy, right? Boxing is rock, paper, scissors. Catterall is a guy who, you know, wants to outbox you. Right? Hiraoka is a slugger who just wants to come in and surprise you. Let me just say, too, Teofimo Lopez is a better boxer than this guy in the pocket. But Teofimo, who has a problem with southpaws who can move, would have a hard time with this guy. Right? Understand, Devin Haney is coming off a loss where he hit the canvas several times. Andy has that kind of power. More importantly, Andy has legs that are at least as good as Devin Haney's legs. Right? So let's take this guy seriously. Valenzuela is great in the pocket. Right? Valenzuela is the guy who beat Pitbull recently. Outbox Pitbull. 
right? Excellent in the pocket. You know, he too likes to get on his back foot on occasion, but he really puts his punches together well. It might not matter if this guy is able to jump away from the pocket, even in straight lines, for most of the fight, and just judiciously come in. He likes to touch you with his right hand first, but come in with a loaded up left that he only has to be right once on. Folks, at the end of this fight, and I saw it after it happened. I did not see it live, right? The fight was in Japan. But at the end of this fight, I was relieved, right? I I'm actually a fan of Barrazos. I was surprised I was getting a plus 350. I was relieved that Barrazos' corner had stopped the fight because against this level of puncher, Barrazzo, who was dazed and confused, right, who was barely surviving, Barrazzo in his 40s could have been badly hurt. That's the level of puncher we're talking about. So as you look at the film, you're going to say, come on, this guy's defensive skills aren't really there. Wow, this guy really can't anticipate punches. His hands are too low. Right? My point to you is, when a guy is blessed by being in his prime, right? Hiraoka is in his 20s. He's a great athlete. That's able to cover up a huge lack of technique. You need to consider this guy to be dangerous at 140. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Let me just say too. You know, that uh, Subiel Matthias, Paro fight, right? Paro won the fight, excellent. More beer for us on that one. But wow, was Paro tired in the later rounds, wasn't he? You were looking at Paro and you thought, man, he's lucky he's ahead in this fight because he's fading, <laughs> right? He's, you know, he's, he's the guy who, you know, the corner has to say to him, you know, hey, man, just one more round, you know, has to encourage him, right? Well, just to understand, here, Hiraoka is as fresh in the ninth round as he looked to be in the second round, right? This is that freak athlete, right? Freak athletes don't have to know technique as well as the rest of us. Right? In a fight against Paro, let's say the later rounds would be an adventure. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.